Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate design and simulation of a SEPIC converter in PSIM. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it. Only then you will get the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a SEPIC converter with design values it's already given. So uh, it is basically a DC to DC converter. One of the major differences with respect to CUC converter is that it does not produce an inverting output voltage. If you are supplying positive polarity of the supply, you will be getting positive polarity at the output terminals so uh, the entire working of a SEPIC converter is already done explained in one of our previous videos so the link will be available in the description and it will also be available in the end screen in case you would like to see how a SEPIC converter works you can watch that video all right let's get started with our design procedure so every design starts up with certain assumptions so these are the values that we are designing the circuit for we are designing uh, for an output voltage of 6 volt the supply voltage that we are going to use is 15 volt the resistance is 2 ohms and the switching frequency is 2 50 kilowatts at the first place we need to determine the duty ratio which is basically the heart of the circuit so if you control the switch only then you will be able to increase or decrease the output voltage so uh, the duty ratio has been given by v out by v out plus vs you will be getting 28.57 percent and once this is done our next step is to determine the average inductor currents and change in inductor currents how do we find that so il2 is equal to i out in this case as a result uh, we will be getting by applying ohm's law v out by uh, the value of the resistance Resistance that we have, you will be getting 3 ohm, 3 amps here. So IL1 is given as V out, I out, whole divided by Vs, you will be getting 1.2 amps. Now we will be assuming the change in inductor currents to be equal to 40% uh, of that of the ripple current. So you will be getting delta IL1 as 0.4 into 1.2 and delta IL2 as 0.4 into 3. So you will be getting 0.48 amps and 1.2 amps respectively. Once this is done, our next step is to determine the inductor values. So how do we do that? So we know delta IL is equal to Vs into D by LF. So substitute these values uh, in the formula for L1 and you will be getting 35.62 micro Henry. Similarly, we will be doing the same for L2 which is Vs into D whole divided by delta IL2 into F. Delta IL2 is already calculated in our previous steps so you will be getting 14.25 micro Henry. Whereas in case of determining the capacitor value C1 and C2 is chosen to be same in case of a SEPIC converter. As a result, you have this formula D whole divided by R into delta V out by V out into F. That is uh, assuming 1% ripple, you will be getting 28.57 microfarad so these are the design procedure we have designed the values of l c and uh, what is our switching frequency and what is our gating uh, block uh, the the value of the duty ratio that we want all of these are designed now uh, one of the most important aspects of uh, entering the values in uh, psim is the gating block block so it has uh, a feature where you have to enter the gating block in degrees and you have to convert duty ratio in terms of degrees so how do we do that 100 percent duty cycle corresponds to 360 degrees so we are designing it for 28.57 duty cycle isn't it so the duty ratio for 28.557 percentage is 102.85 degrees so this is the value that we have to enter so since uh, pcm does not take decimal values uh, while entering the degrees so we will round off it to be equal to 103 degrees and enter that in gating block in pcm so this is one of the most important steps and if you understand this step simulation is pretty straightforward let's go to pc and get started all right here we are uh, these are the components that are available over here uh, uh, you can have this taskbar indeed uh, by uh, going to the elements block and choose the components that you want and add this to the taskbar pin this to this taskbar at the first place uh, we will be requiring a dc voltage source so add that block uh, and once that is done we will be requiring an inductor as well so connect it in this particular fashion in a way that it is uh, usable for connecting a circuit diagram so so a capacitor is connected in this particular fashion and we need a diode which is connected uh, in the forward direction and another capacitor is used we can rotate it by right clicking on the mouse and uh, we will be connecting another resistor at the load terminal in this particular fashion uh, we need a switch so we are using MOSFET the reason why we are not using thyristor is pretty simple because we don't want an additional commutation circuit and the complexity of the circuit will be increasing so as a result uh, in order to reduce that uh, we are not using a thyristor so we will be connecting it in this particular fashion so one of the most important things to remember is the MOSFET should be placed in this particular direction if it is inverted then uh, there is no chance that you will be getting 
getting the output so be very careful while connecting the mosfet so i am connecting uh, the remaining uh, portion of our circuit according to our circuit diagram uh, so once this is done uh, we will be entering the parameters with respect to our circuit we need another inductor over here so control c control v we can rotate it in this particular fashion and use this one to connect it this is basically a connector that is used to connect all the components that are there so once uh, all of these are done we'll be entering our uh, input values uh, the supply voltage is 15 volt according to our design and uh, the inductor value that is l1 is 35.62 micro entry so enter 35.62 you you will directly uh, be able to have that conversion of micro over there so once this is done uh, the capacitor value that we've chosen is 28.57 microfarad so we'll be entering that and uh, we can also uh, make them visible by selecting this in case if you would want that that can also be done so uh, the value of inductance l2 is 14.25 uh, micro entry so enter 14.25 uh, u and once that is done close this uh, the value of c2 is basically the value of c1 so both are selected to be same 28.57 microfarad so enter that value as well so once this is done uh, our last step is to enter the resistance value that is uh, the value of resistor is 2 ohm so we have chosen uh, a static load which is basically a resistive load in this case so apart from that uh, the heart of our circuit which is basically the gating block this is the gating block so we need to enter the parameters over here as well so the switching frequency is 200 and uh, 50 kilohertz so enter that and number of tappings uh, or points be equal to 2 and uh, as I told you uh, we need to enter 103 degree because that is the duty ratio that corresponds to the angle uh, in case of PSIM so once this is done we have entered all the parameters we need to measure the input and output voltage we'll be using probes for that uh, the input and output side we'll use a connector and uh, connect it across these two points we can label these uh, uh, ports as well in this particular uh, fashion like you can click on that and uh, give that a name and then give it to display it in this particular screen so once that is done now uh, we need a simulation control block this basically controls center simulation process according to the requirement so let it be a default value now let so once simulation control is done so if you carefully observe we have not connected the gate terminal here now we will be uh, clicking on run simulation so the time step is automatically changed because uh, PSIM has that ability to adjust its time step uh, in such a way that uh, according to the circuit it will be able to change its value the only thing that we need to do now is to click on ok and now we will be able to see the output click on the variables that you want to see the output for and add that over here and then you will be able to see that uh, zoom in a little bit you can zoom the specific portion of the waveforms as well in this particular fashion so if you carefully observe uh, you are getting an output voltage we are designing it for 6 volts so you are getting approximately a DC voltage at 6 volt these are the ripples this is because charging and discharging of capacitor takes place as a result you are getting like this uh, and not a constant DC this can be further reduced and you will be getting a constant DC by shoot suitably designing uh, the capacitance value uh, so uh, the initial uh, waveform that we had uh, i'll just show that as well so the supply voltage that we have given is 15 volt and it is 15 here and you are getting approximately 6 6 volt so this is exactly what we are supposed to get and we are getting it so we can achieve a boost operation as well by uh, choosing the duty ratio more than 50 percent so that can also be done uh, so you can try that out on your own so this is how we'll be simulating sepic converter in a piece uh, I hope you have understood the concept and if you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you